All right, team. Um, KJ, we'll do you first. Um, I just went on ball chasing and just looked at a random replay that all three of you guys played together. Um, so I got one pulled up here. Here, I'll show you the ball chasing first. Um, so you guys won this one apparently, 1 0. I just looked for a close one, um, picked it arbitrarily. I'm sure it'll be decent regardless. Um, we can look at, I like looking at boost, uh, boost per minute. I don't know, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, average boost amount does matter a little bit. So it looks like Kate's a little bit low, but who knows? Sometimes somebody's just going to be low. Sex with 100 boost. Kate has 100 boost a lot. Hmm. I'm really bad at keeping 100 boost. I burned through it right away. Um, but with your, your stuff just looks standard. Um, low boost, a decent amount. Let's see all the times they're at zero boost. My usual supersonic is not very much. That's really good. All three of you guys are really low. That's really good. I like to say that small pads. This could probably be a lot higher. Sometimes I get games up in like the 80s. Um, so we'll look at that. Big pads all around. Maybe could be bigger. We'll see. Um, but I like looking at time on zero boost and seeing the small pads. So that's what matters there. Let's go to movement. Some XP. This is all pretty standard. Nobody looks too slow or anything. Um, this all looks pretty standard as well. Your big power slider. My power slide count is always through the roof as well. And but sometimes higher ranked people than me have like half the amount of power slide. And I don't know why, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, everything looks pretty standard here. So. Nothing too obvious. We'll go into the replay now. All right, here's your perspective. I think the colors are all messed up. For some reason, I forced default colors on, even though it's unchecked on my settings. I don't know how to turn it off. So, sorry if the colors look weird. This is all chilling. That was weird that you got this demo. Um, so overall, um, when you are first person in their corner, this might be a little bit weird. I'm going to go to fly cam here in a second, but just because I haven't even looked at fly cam. So this is all just from your perspective, based on my intuition. Typically when you are first person in their corner, you kind of have that magic triangle that I always talk about. And if the ball's going really fast and you don't have a super good touch, you can fake it sometimes and they'll pass it to your teammate. Uh, so you maybe could have done that here, but I think you also have a chance of beating them and like banging it off the backboard to your team anyway, which would maybe be a better touch. So this is this touch is all right. I am curious to see where your teammates are. I mean, a de one demo just happened, so someone's gone. And Kay just grabbed that boost. So if you would have faked it, this would have wrapped around. It would have bounced, bounced, and wrapped around this wall, and this would have been a free ball for Cade. I think he has boost, right? Oh no, he got beat to that boost. But just an idea. I know after kickoff, sometimes it's really weird. Um, but faking in their corner when you're first person is pretty good. Uh, oh, wait. I don't know if that mid boost is actually there or not. I was going to say you could have grabbed that mid boost, but I don't think it's actually there. Just feeling, be careful about the boost usage. You can also probably speed flip here instead of front flipping. Where was Tanner? Tanner's already downfield. So just let him be the person downfield that this pass can go to. Because now you just made Cade last. If the, you don't have enough information to know where this is going, if they had somebody ready for this bang, like this North but faking guy, if he's more ready for this and he jumps instantly, like if he's here, he jumps instantly and beats this, that's just a free, free ball. But it wouldn't be a free goal if you stayed back. And you're low boost. So just grab these pads, steal the corner from this guy who's being a little over aggressive. And just don't be afraid to play third sometimes. I noticed that a little bit when it was you, me, and Cade playing. Like you don't have the boost to go for that. You can rotate back post too. I, I think this might be a, like a habit that... Uh, 
you three playing together have just gotten used to. This is why I think solo queuing is good. Um, I think you are just probably the, you definitely are the fastest player on the team. And I think you can see half a step ahead of the game than everybody else on your team. And so I think you guys have built the habit of just letting you cut rotation sometimes because you're just faster and we just let you stay downfield. But realistically, this should be Cade pushing up with Tanner here. And you should be back post. You're cutting off Cade right now. That's why you guys are both awkward. You both turn back right here because you cut him off right there. I'm going to make you watch it again so you can see where you cut. Look, they're both there. They're both there. You're rotating midfield. You're not rotating opposite side field, which is kind of okay. But now is the point where you need to start rotating back post. You think about it for half a second and then you turn in right here. You see both your teammates there. And now the net is completely exposed. I mean, it's fine because there's not really a threat, but like all three of you guys are going to be pushed up into this corner now. So see that, look for that pattern. That's when you should go back post. And now Cade didn't have a good angle because you guys like awkwardly rotated when he would have been pushed out. And that would have been over his head and would have been perfect ball for you to go for. But now you're like awkwardly up here. It's probably a goal for them. Oh, you barely got a piece of it. I like that you're taking your time. This is good. I like the demo or the attempt. This is all chilling. Uh, be careful about turning in right here. Like when you think about where this ball can possibly go, the only realistic place that this ball can go is like either towards the net or towards this mid boost. Either Cade's going to win that or somebody's going to dunk him and it's going to wrap right around. There's like no chance that this ball in this particular situation is going to come over here. And that's where you turn towards. And you turn there early. Like the ball would have had to already have been going there for you to be here now. So it's all about timing. And so I think since the timing isn't there yet, just take your time, play wide, play wide, play wide, play wide, wait for the right opportunity, maybe even grab this boost if there's enough time. And then if you were here and then this play happens, now you're facing in and you're facing towards the play. I mean, you probably wouldn't want to go for this anyway. Tanner maybe could have gone for that, but you would be here and now you'd be turning back for net already. But now at this point, because you kind of awkwardly went here and then back for boost and then up here and then back here, you're like you're zigzagging and now you're way delayed because your timing was just off. Oh, interesting. I thought Tanner would have been back post there and then he would have passed you. That's where my instinct tells me. So you see, you see that Tanner is on that far corner at this time. Kate tries to get a pass through. It doesn't quite get there. My instinct tells me, okay, this, this is what Tanner should have done. Tanner should be here right now. He should be going for this ball. And so your instinct here, this would be a time you stay upfield. They boom it to your team. If I'm you, I'm going here and I'm zigzag. I'm turning up onto the wall here for Tanner to boom that to me. This is the play that should have happened between all three of you guys. And now I don't, I'm not in your comms. I don't know what's happening in discord. Maybe Tanner said like, oh, I'm awkward here. So, you know, he doesn't have the boom. I don't know, but that's what I'm thinking. And here you're kind of, you're falling a little close to be careful. Okay, you turn it backward. Good, 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 good. I like that you're turning it backward, or the sidewall here. That's perfect, because the only thing they can do is hit it hard. Tanner's also kind of there, that's fine. Careful though, you're creeping, you're creeping. You're covering this option, you're covering their boom there. Tanner's got this one. You, you don't turn in here, don't turn in here. You're too close. There's nothing you can do with only 22 boost. Tanner's already there. You don't want to have two people in your opponent's corner. That leaves Kate in a horrible spot. So be really careful about this turn in here. What you could do is turn out and maybe do another circle around back here. And I think you'd have time for that. You end up getting a touch anyway, but it doesn't really lead to too much. And it's just like a little risky. Luckily Kate gets that. I want to look at your ball cam usage. Because I go to, I've realized I go to car cam too much. So I want to look at this again. You hear, you hear. You don't know where the ball is right now. I mean, it doesn't isn't necessarily coming to you, but it might help just to go to ball cam one more time. Cause like, where where is the ball right now? And now you're like, oh, it's going out towards Cade. Careful, you're you're a little bit too far pushed up. Cause what are what's gonna happen here? There's kind of like three things that's gonna happen here, and on any fifty really, or maybe there's kind of like four things. 
one thing, the one thing that is most likely going to happen, and the thing that does end up happening because we just saw it, is Tanner doesn't get a touch on this, but he forces the guy to throw it away. So Tanner gets beat, that ball's just rolling out here. And it's gonna, based on the speed of that, that that guy's going and how he flips into it, that ball's gonna land about here. You're like here. Think about if you're right here. You'd be able to get that ball perfectly. So be careful about being too far pushed up. You're playing that Tanner gets beat because the other options, Tanner gets a dunk here. If Tanner gets a dunk, it bounces off backboard and kind of lands over here. Cade can turn in for that. Or if you're over there, you still might have time to get turn in for that because you'll have speed. Um, and if that happens, they're probably going to beat you anyway, even from the position you're at. Another option is they kind of like 50 and it shoots way out wide here. Then that's Cade's ball. Um, another option is it somehow they 50 and it just drops straight middle. You would still be there for that uh, before them, probably, even if you're right here. You're just a little bit too close based on the current situation because you basically are playing that Tanner's getting beat. I guess it does go forward a little bit more than I thought it was. So I wanted you to play. I thought that the ball would land right here. It ends up landing closer to over here. But even if you're playing just a little bit further back, see how much easier this angle is for this? It'd be much, much easier. So just a little bit too close there. But that's the difference. I'm, I'm really overemphasizing this one point because that's the difference. You have the mechanical skill that you need. It's just being a little bit further back and being just in the right position and timing things properly. You probably could have grabbed that back boost there. I don't know if it was there. Maybe it's a replay button. But now you're, look how awkwardly close you are to everybody. Yeah, it's, it's your timing again. Um, we'll go back again. So the painter's rotating in. Slow down. It's not always about going fast. Being going slow and maybe even being like completely stopped sometimes is okay because it's all about the timing. It's all about tempo. The so Tanner goes in front of you. Cade should probably be going right now. Um, and now Tanner slow down. Now it's like this big traffic jam between all three of you guys in the goal. You could just slow down, grab this boost, even if it's not actually there. I don't know based on the replay. You could still drive over it just to like take a wider angle to keep your speed a little bit and just like slow down because you want to time this as well as you can. Because now you're slow, now you're awkward before you are now. You almost get scored on. Oh, that's unfortunate. Good save there, though. Good force. You maybe didn't have to jump if I get this try to finally go for the dunk. I'm glad you didn't flip, though. Yeah, that's a good touch. I like that a lot. But, like, what are you doing after the touch, right? You're here. You recover. You probably want to get that boost. Again, not 100% sure if it's there. I think it's there. You probably want to get that boost. And now, uh, this is okay. I think Cade has this, though. Like, you don't know the situation on the field. And this is where comms come in, where Cade would say, uh, touch it to me or something, or I got it, and Cade should call you off of this. But because you're so far pushed up all the time, like, you're always on the opposite side of the ball, uh, you don't have a lot of info. So be really careful about that, because Cade probably could have just taken this. Let's look at this from his angle. So he has all the time in the world from this touch. It is all the time in the world. If I were, I like, and look what ends up happening. He could have had a great pass to you off the backboard if you just rotate out sometimes. And this is also why, like, when we were playing together, you often had the most points and everything because you stayed on field so much. Um, and, like, I was bottom of the leaderboard because I'm the most willing to just sit there and play third. I like the challenge. You're going fast now. Careful about shooting here. Like from that angle, he's back post. You don't have enough speed. You don't have enough direction change on the ball. Th that dude is going to save this shot no matter where you put it on the net from here. A hundred times out of a hundred. Um, so what you have to do is you have to go for some sort of outplay. You either have to get a soft touch and then a big touch. Or what I would recommend doing is just turning into it. Bam, popping it off the backboard to yourself and then going for a quick double like into the top corner. Uh, that'll throw him off. But if you shoot that, he's going to save 100% of the time. I like this position. This is a good time to cut. Like, because you're rotating out wide like this, look how much info you have. You can see everything. You have a hundred boosts. You got speed. You have plenty of time to go either to net or to the ball, no matter what happens. Like, look at this position. This is what you want to put yourself in a lot more. I like that. That's a huge pass. That's a good play. Yes, I flinched in real life. I literally just blinked because the ball hits, it goes through the camera. Uh, but I really like that you slow it down and you try to go for an outplay. 
most uh, lower ranks would just flip into this and bang it. Uh, but I like that you go for an outplay. Like, you try to cut it around. That's good. So you can cut on this one. Yeah, that's huge. That's an okay touch. Cade maybe could have turned on that, but I don't know his stitch. Good bomb. You can maybe jump on these if you really want to win it. If you jump right here, this ball's going nowhere. But because you're on the ground, it's able to go over you. Which is still fine. Like, that's still a good 50. Like, you give Kate a free ball. He kind of tosses it, but... This is good. Be careful about that flip, though. You maybe could have waited a little bit longer on this challenge. Because if you get beat here, it's fine. Yeah, like, if you got beat there, Tanner has it. Uh, so you maybe could have played like a more aggressive, but you yeah, that's still a good good challenge. Um, but be careful here. You don't have to jump right now. You have plenty of time to just keep driving and try to put this on top of your car because you have a one on one. Yeah, kind of. The other guy might have been like, "Oh, you get a pass through." Never mind. I thought that you died before you got the touch. Never mind. Don't listen to me. That was goaded. Good pass. I thought you ended up giving it away. Careful about how close you're playing right here on this like opposite side. Because now like, I guess it kind of does bounce to you, but here we'll go back even more. Watch this from Kate's perspective. Kate is the person who should be playing second right now. He has a more aggressive, aggressive positioning and he's a cross field in threes. Oftentimes the pass is going to end up going across the net and the open zone on the backboard like this guy has this whole front of the net area covered. The only way you're going to break this defense right now is if this pass pinches across and Cade puts it in like in back post and it goes over that guy's head. That's the only way you're going to score right now. So you being here is very unlikely that you're going to score your low boost. You make it impossible for Cade to be willing to commit to anything. Uh, you should be backed up and playing third right now. So your, your biggest habit is still being too far pushed up too frequently. Like, let other people play second sometimes. Oh, that was a good pass. You're a good attempt. Didn't quite get through. Was threatening. Nice. I like that you took your time. Maybe could have had a better first touch, though. But that's tough. Go back post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. I mean, you didn't necessarily have to go back post, but you had to go behind Tanner. Because now, look how much like free space you have because you were so far back. This guy is probably going to be able to get a 50 with you, but still. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. Uh, my thought here, because I want to score one so bad, is to get the flip reset double touch. Like, let this hit the wheels of your car. I want to score one so bad, I still haven't. But that would have been so clean. Should be a goal. Ah, that was a tough shot from Kane. They kind of covered the bottom of the net. You had to hit it high. Nice, I like that. You maybe could go sooner. When oftentimes in threes, when you're the person in the backboard, just go like right away. Honestly, force them to do something as soon as possible. The sooner you force them to make a move or go over or under you, or you take a fifty or something, the more time that your teammates have to react. But you still win pretty fast. I like that. Rotate back post, my guy. Play goes this way. Turn this way. Let your teammates go. Look how awkward this is for Tanner now. He's front post with no support. This should just be Tanner's ball. He should have, he'll have this all day. Like you didn't even do anything. You just made it awkward for him. It ended up working out, but it's it's not as good. Unfortunate recovery. Ooh, he almost got that touch. Outplay. Ooh, I like that flip to the wall. That was clean. Uh, what else could you have done? You, uh, on this pop, uh, it's tough because you really have to avoid that demo. What I would have done is slow down just a hair to get like a, a pop that doesn't go as far away from me, but I would have gotten demoed for it. So maybe you made the right play and you caught up to it. You're just fast, my guy. 
Honestly, we take that. That's a good trade for us. Because you spawn back now. And you slowed him down. That's unfortunate. Clean, though. Clean flips to the wall. You rotate out. Yes, now you rotate out. This is so good. Kid got bumped, unfortunately. So now it's okay to cut in front of him because he got bumped and you saw it. Good beat. Tanner shouldn't have turned for that. You had a one-on-one -on -one there. You could have been a little bit more aggressive. I know you missed this first touch. And even here, you might get demoed if you try to play a little bit aggressively, but you might be able to try to just get a controlling touch rather than flipping into this. But not, not a bad thing. Like You still get a good pass off because of it. And you guys have the lead, so maybe you just want to play safe. Now I like that you're downfield because you know Cade is back. Then you know Tanner has possession. Um, I, I challenge you, though. You know that they have two people back as well. Try I, As you keep ranking up, they're going to be more and more ready for these passing plays. So you're not going to get as many goals straight up off of them. Um... So I would tr challenge you to try to get this back to Tanner in any way you can. He's already turning back, so I guess you don't really have any option here. Um, but you maybe, instead of putting on net, could slam it off the backboard like here, and then maybe Tanner could turn for it. Um, you'd also hope that Cade would be closer, but I don't know his sitch. Maybe he had to go back. Maybe shooting on net's all you could do to keep pressure in there. But just overall, be careful about just putting on net every time. Um, so yeah, that's the end of that replay. You had a lot of really good plays. You're really good at just playing fast, but I think it's to your detriment sometimes. Like, uh, it's okay to just wait back post sometimes. Let your teammates do their thing. Um, also rotate back post a little bit more. Rotate out of the play sometimes, especially if only one person is back. Only stay downfield if both your teammates are back. Um, that, and then also there's twice, like that one time at the end, maybe that didn't count, but there was another time where you just took a shot on net where I told you to go for, that you could have gone for a double or just a pop or something. So be really careful about putting on net when they have one person back. Sometimes you have to go for that beat. It's, as you keep ranking up and keep getting better, people are going to be making these saves every time. Um, those are my two criticisms for you. Uh, rotate out, just rotate out more. Just be willing to play third person. I know we're already a national, so you don't have a whole lot of time to like go through a huge learning period, but I think overall, eventually, um, You'll have to like overcompensate and play third a little bit too much. So that way you'll find that perfect balance of when you should be playing third and when you can stay up. Right now, I think you're staying up just a little bit too much. Uh, but yeah, good stuff. Let's get this dub today.